Hello again, I'm Gleb, and in this video, I'm going to tell you about 5G handover types. But first of all, please note, this video is only about general information purposes. This is not a technical advice, and please use your official documents, manuals, and user guides from your vendor. As you may know, there are so many handover types and names, and sometimes it is really hard to classify to understand the difference between, uh, let's say, coverage-based handovers and load balancing handovers and intra-intercell handovers. So the main purpose of this video is try to make some, some kind of order, try to make some kind of classification and understand better handovers in 5G. But first of all, let's review main points of any handovers. You may know that any handovers must not be experienced in terms of quality for end users. For end users, there is no any differences how handovers will be worked out, what kind of KPIs, network cells, they don't care about it. They only care about how to get very good reliable connectivity and service without any possible drops, without any visible and sensible reduction of throughput and latency. And the second point is that any 4G, 5G handovers, uh, they happen only between two different cells. I mean, there is no intra-cell handover in, in a classical scenario like it was uh, in GSM network. So any handovers happens between two cells. And uh, it can be a little bit confused because we know there is also a beam mobility. And sometimes user equipment may need to change beam while moving or due to different radio conditions. And if uh, beam switching occurs inside one cell, it means that there is only beam switching procedure. If uh, user equipment change it beams between two cells, I mean that cells connected to different cells, it means that it is beam switching plus handover procedure. Because beam switching, it is always about physical and mark layer, Whereas handover, it is more about logical, it is more about RSC connection signaling. We also should know about that. When it comes to main handover reasons, there are multiple reasons for performing handover in network. First of all, of course, mobility. Mobility, it is what gives us real mobility in any wireless networks. And in order to support optimal for network and optimal for user equipment, downlink, uplink connection while user equipment moving, handovers may happen. That's basically one of the major reasons for any handovers is uh, user equipment mobility. Of course, when user equipment moves, downlink and uplink coverage quality can be degraded. Network should support downlink uplink connection, not only when user equipment moves, but also when uh, user equipment may experience different radio conditions because network is alive. Changes in radio conditions due to interference, due to a load situation in cells, in neighbor cells. That's why also network try to support uplink downlink connection and may have a decision on handover to based on based on that measurements also there is a service based handover it is also possible to move users from one cell to another cell or another frequency layer in order to provide for them better environment to get better service. This is usually happens with uh, voice calls, with voice handovers. We sure that lower layer of frequencies is better in terms of radio coverage. We want to move voice users to that lower layer in order to give them more possibility to get that service in a more reliable way. Also not so common, but also possible is a distance-based handover. It is handover which is uh, based on time and advanced thresholds. And if that threshold is higher certain numbers, network can evaluate, can perform a decision on handover to target cell. Next one is uh, also very common handover reason is load balancing. This may be kind of a feature for different networks. I think in 5G, it is also very common. 
Of course, this may be performed for offloading reasons to offload current cells based on different metrics, such as PRB utilization or number of active users or number of connected RSC connected users. Based on that decision, if a current cell is overloaded, some part of users may be handled to another cells, to another bands, frequency bands, or even to another technologies. For example, from 5G, overload 4 and right now, let's try to classify handovers from network point of view. We all know that 5G has base station, which is name is G node B. And G node B may consist of different nodes, distributed units and centralized units. So it is also possible to have handovers between these nodes, and we may call them inter-DU or intra-CU handovers. It depends on what kind of cells connected to what kind of nodes in 5G run network. Also, it is possible when a handover occurs between cells which connected to not only different run, but also different 5G core nodes. In this case, we may say there is a handover between 5G base stations, but that base station connected, for example, to different IMF or to different UPF. In this case, we can say inter 5G core handover. Also, it is possible, of course, it is possible to have handovers between different technologies, or we may call them IRAT handovers. Uh, this is, for example, handover between 4G e B and 5G G B. Of course, it will uh, have uh, involve uh, different procedures between cores. Handovers also can be classified from interfaces point of view. For example, XN or X2 interface involved in handover procedures, we may call them X2 XN based handovers. Or if there is a handover between two different cores, between 4G core and 5G core, we may call it N26 based handover because this is interface between 5G AMF and 4G MME. And by this way, we emphasize what kind of interfaces, what kind of nodes involved in handover procedures. So it can be a little bit confused, but you may see it in different books, in different specifications, vendor manuals. But uh, this is only for the purpose to emphasize what kind of interfaces or what kind of nodes involved in handover procedures. But basically, physically, uh, from that point of view, there is no difference. This is a handover between two different cells. In case of dual connectivity or non-standalone operation, uh, there is no such kind of a classical 4G, 5G handovers. Basically, user equipment try to keep control plane and user plane connection as with the 4G anchor layer. And that anchor layer uh, may consist of multiple 4G cells. We may call them master cell group. So this master cell group consists of different 4G cells. This is a kind of an anchor because control plane is also goes through that cells. And NR cells, they just can be added or released or changed while user equipment keeps connection with 4G master cell groups. When user equipment changing LT cell, LT anchor cell, NR cells automatically released. So that's why it is really important to keep, to have a very good 4G anchor layer in order to avoid the situations when 5G nodes released from dual connectivity. There are also other types of handovers, very interesting. We will talk about it in my next videos, such as DAPS handover, or we can call it dual active protocol stack handover. It is when user equipment try to simultaneously receive and transmit data from source cell and from target cell. Of course, in this situation has additional requirements for user equipment side. Reduce handover interruption time, reduce latency. Also, there is a conditional handover. It is a handover when user equipment can be, can be configured with two execution conditions, options. That kind of handover can improve reliab uh, reliability of handover procedures. Now let's look at this diagram. Here you can see two base stations, G node B number one and G node B number two. We can see that G node B number one has centralized unit with control plane and user plane. 
and it has distributed units with multiple radio units. Let's suppose one radio unit has only one cell, like in my example for simplification. Uh, we can see that it is possible multiple scenarios. For example, when uh, user equipment moves from cell number one to cell number two, it has intra-distributed unit handover because all signaling, all of that happens only within one distributed unit without a core network, without other interfaces. When we have handovers, cell number two and cell number three between different distributed units, we may call it inter-DU handover, which involves a little bit more interfaces, uh, but also possible. And of course, when we have handover between different G node B, it means between different centralized units, we may call them inter-CU handover. Also, as it see from my diagram, it is possible uh, to have handover to 4G network via interface between MME and AMF, interface N26. It is also possible to have such handovers. Uh, so we may also classify handovers from frequency layers point of view. We may call handover between uh, different cells with the same frequencies. We may call it intra frequency. Uh, we may have handover between different cells and different frequencies. We may call it inter-frequency handover. And also there is a blind handover because usually in most of the cases, handover has three steps, measurement, uh, preparation, and execution. And blind handover, this is handover which has only preparation and execution phases. So without measurements in order to reduce time because measurements may happen from a few milliseconds to a few seconds. For some scenarios, it can be very useful. For example, for the scenarios of load balancing, like in my example, you can see when G node B, first of all, try to evaluate current load in current cell, then if that current load is higher than certain criteria, for example, higher than uh, PRB utilization or uh, number of active users and so on and so on. Generally, we try to check if blind handover feature is activated or deactivated. And if that activated, it may uh, perform blind handover, so handover without a long phase of measurements to a particular cell. And usually uh, blind handover is used for load balancing to balance different layers, uh, offload high layers of frequencies, and to move users from high frequencies to lower frequencies. And in this case, we don't need any measurements, basically, because uh, usually lower frequencies, they are more reliable and radio condition in e is more stable. So that's why we can omit measurement phase. So it was my short video about handover classifications. In my next video, I will cover in more detail uh, handover procedures in 5G networks. If you like this video, you can like and subscribe. Goodbye.